not much longer until Ubuntu 1904 is released, and although I'm already using it on three different systems, let's take a look at something that is out and based on Ubuntu long-term support, Linux Lite version 4.4. So I have to say I'm quite a fan of Linux Lite. It is aimed more at a new user coming across from Windows, with perhaps older hardware, because it's based on the XFCE desktop, it's much more lightweight than Ubuntu or Kubuntu is. I will mention for full disclosure that Jerry Betancon, the creator of Linux Lite, does sponsor me through Patreon. You might have noticed that on the outro credits of my videos. It doesn't really influence my decision about what I think of this distro, and I'm sure he would rather that I said what I thought of it, not that I'm just going to praise it for the sake of it. One of the changes in this release is that they've moved their coding across from SourceForge to OSDN, the Open Source Development Network doesn't impact the end user as such, I just wanted to mention that as one of the changes. Most of the other changes are more minor really, and one in particular here is that the Google Plus logo has gone. Makes sense since Google ended the service. So Linux Lite is developed by a small team, headed up by Jerry Besancon. The distro has been around for a few years now, and it's not like they've just gone and reskinned the XFCE desktop, put a nice theme on it, and incidentally the theme is called adapter and the icon theme is called Propyrus Adapter. Yeah, there's a few other things that take it over and above the standard distro. And it's more on like the external support. Things like we have here, the hardware database, so they do allow for submissions of what your hardware is. But this has a different setup to Ubuntu or Deepin OS, in that the submission about your system is entirely your choice. You actually have to make the effort to click the button saying, I have submitting details about my system, sending anonymous details about it, so you can say whether it works, what hardware you have, and you can actually search the hardware database, so you can look and see what other people have submitted. So this is a much nicer way of doing hardware submissions, one could say tracking, but it's not really tracking, yeah, it's just Linux Lite works on my particular setup, or these different setups. There is also a help manual pre-installed, nice little web layout to it. There's some really good guides on how to set up, well, looking at the one here for printing. It's really nice and detailed, you've got screenshots, you've got full explanation, and that is something a new user could follow. You can go through that at your own pace. There is really quite a lot of information here. I'm quite impressed with it. There's definitely been a lot of work put into this. Before I get too far into the system, I'll show you the memory usage, and I ran this before I opened up the browser. So the memory usage is 440 meg. Now I believe that is the same as what it was in my previous video of Linux Lite version 4.0. There's nothing much running, yeah, the CPU is sitting there doing nothing. Let's look more at the unique aspects of this operating system. So I've got a choice of either looking at the settings here or the whisker menu, and looking through the settings menu this way. But what I wanted to show you was the custom applications, the light applications. You have options of setting various different configuration items here, the auto login, selecting the icons on the desktop, submitting your hardware information with the community. The light software is a basic software center. It offers a variety of different types of applications, but only gives you pretty much one option of each application. And that's fair enough for a new user, you don't really want to overwhelm them with a massive choice, you want to give them the best of what there is. There have been a couple of new additions, and that has been Redshift and Soundducer. Soundducer will install the restricted extras due to the dependencies. But say I want some software for recording and editing sounds, Audacity, which I do actually use. Yeah, so I want to install that, just go through the install, point and click, and it's done. I did have a slight issue though when I was first using this, but that was due to a broken package upgrade, one specific application. Unfortunately what happened, it was coming up with deconf error code 1, which is very vague. Error code 1 just pretty much means generic error message. It did take me a little bit of effort to solve that one, but I'm not blaming Linux Lite, it was just something that happened. Maybe I inadvertently rebooted during the package upgrade. Quite likely, so yeah, that could have happened anywhere on any Ubuntu system. These are the applications I've installed and could now remove. I have the option to enable and disable system sounds. There's the volume control and you can raise it above 100%. 
But they did mention about solving a bug on the volume control. I can't remember specifically what it was though. The software sources, system report, light tweaks, some various little uh, tweaks you can do on your operating system. I've praised this application quite a few times before. Nice and simple to change various things that you won't necessarily change on a day-to-day -day basis. NumLock at system boot, yeah, not necessarily an everyday change. Some performance tweaks, clearing out memory cache. In fact, I could have tried that had I thought about it, package to system repair. You see, I didn't go looking for that. I just went, messed around with the Linux terminal, trying to solve it in a way that I would know. Didn't try the graphical method. My bad. Anyway. The feature exists. A couple of different upgrade options here, so the notifications and the actual upgrade between different minor and major versions of the distribution. There's a user manager, a bit more specialist than some of the user managers, because you can actually select the groups the Linux user belongs to. Although perhaps that won't necessarily mean much to someone coming across from Windows. But you can leave that alone. There's the welcome screen. And I think that is pretty much it for the custom applications. Even this welcome screen is a nice feature. You've got some simple things to install updates, drivers, setting a restore point, language support, different options for support, the forums, reading help manual, and some options on contributing, code, donations, the shop, or looking at social media. So looking at setting a restore point, and that is opening up time shift. There's a few different wallpapers included nice photos, and various different material versions of the Linux Lite logo. But that pretty much covers the unique aspects of the operating system. Now we're on to the more generic features of the XFCE desktop. I really do like the icon set and the theming. It's really nice and bold, but without being too over the top. Looking at the application naming, it is very simple. It describes the function of the application rather than what it's specifically called. So calculator, we're just opening up calculator. I mean, what calculator is it? I don't know. Do I need to know? Although GIMP is mentioned by name, although it does have what it is underneath it in the subtitle. The browser of choice is Firefox, and you also have Thunderbird for the email. VLC is the media player. And for Office, well, you've just got new document presentation and spreadsheet. That is LibreOffice. So that was a look at Linux Lite version 4.4. I have to say I'm still impressed by this operating system. It is nice and welcoming for new users, but it's not too over the top for advanced users. I would not necessarily feel there are too many applications that I would go and have to remove. Now I could pretty much leave it as it is, and it might be nice to use some of those Lite tweaks applications. But thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.